Hey, what's going on guys? It's Torin here with another Total War Warhammer online commentary. In this particular battle, I'm going to be playing the Dwarves and I'm going to be facing off against the Vampire Counts. So just a disclaimer guys, this game was actually from my stream last weekend, so some of you may have already seen this, but uh, hopefully you enjoy it nonetheless. And also, um, again, the, another reason I decided to post this game is because again, I felt the Dwarf strategy here, the build that I ended up using, was pretty darn effective against the Vampire Counts. So um, hopefully you guys can give it a try and uh, let me know your thoughts. As far as my particular composition goes, I have a front line of these gyrocopters with brimstone guns here. I guess I wouldn't call them a front line, but they are my vanguard out here, going to do a little bit of a harass damage, hopefully be able to take out this mortis engine before it gets too close to my army. So I do have three of those. They have an anti-large bonus. They do have armor piercing. So again, for taking out mortis engines, they do pretty well. They also do very well against vargulfs, which in you know pretty high level ladder play, you see a lot of vargulfs against dwarves from the vampire counts. They're very, very fast, hard to deal with. They can usually knock through your ranks pretty effectively, but they do have very low leadership. So having these brimstone guns shooting at them, you know, helps crumble them pretty quickly. So three of those guys. On top of that, I have a group of slayers in the back, just kind of on guard duty. And you can see in the back, I also do have Althar's Rangers here, or Althar's Raiders, um, who do have the mark by Althar. So for those of you that haven't seen that before, if you go ahead and look here, they do have kind of a, I wouldn't call it a dot ability, but a targeted ability that makes it so the unit that they kind of hex with it has negative 22% missile resistance, negative 16 armor, and negative 24 missile parry. So very, very good at taking out high value units. It's good against the Vargulfs, you know, the enemy lords, necromancers, whatever you want to focus down. So in conjunction with them, I also do have a group of rangers here. So rangers are pretty cheap, only 500 resources. And against vampire counts, they do have a stock ability. So stock essentially means they can't be seen unless the opponent is very close or they start open firing. So against the vampires who are probably going to be preemptively looking to summon zombies on your missiles, it's kind of an out of sight, out of mind thing where they might not get it off initially and you can get a few volleys before they get bogged down. So I like that pick there. And then aside from that, I just kind of have a front line of, you know, just a, a dwarf Death Star. So I have dwarf warriors in the front, the warriors of Dragonfire Pass, who I actually like them quite a bit. They're very good at cutting through fodder. They do have an anti-infantry bonus. So if we go and look, let's see what it is here. So a uh, six, which isn't, you know, it's not great, but it's not terrible either. And they have pretty outstanding stats and fire damage. So any units with regenerate, um, I think Cryptors do. Let's actually go and take a look. So these guys right here, um, these Argulfs are, you know, sensitive to fire. The Cryptors are also sensitive to fire. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass are a very, very strong pick here. On top of that, more Dwarf Warriors. In the secondary line, I have Armor Piercing, so Longbeards with great weapons. And then the Grumbling Guard, of course, who do have that Vigor Aura. Lastly, but not least, I do have Rune Lords here. A Rune Lord, um, you know, the full kind of basket of goodies. And then two Rune Smiths here to kind of take out Ethereal units, work down Grave Guard, and all that sort of stuff. So as far as my opponent's army composition, he does have Manfred von Karstein. The Konigstein Stalkers, which is a pretty interesting pick, but they're shielded and do have poison attack, so definitely can't complain about that. And a front line of, you know, Skeleton Warriors and relatively, you know, low tier fodder units, which is very common when you see the Vargulf and Cryptor style play. So um, he does have a whole back line of Cryptors, a Mortis Engine, two Vargulfs, and let's see what else. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then he actually does have a necromancer who I believe is riding a horse over here. So he has the scroll of shielding, invocation of the heck and raise dead. And then of course, Manfred also does have the raise dead ability. So no invocation of the heck on him, interestingly enough. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started guys. So my opponent's advancing pretty quickly here, obviously realizing that these gyrocopters are going to apply a lot of pressure. And honestly, the mortis engine in so many matchups is such a determining factor as to the success of the vampires. And if you're able to poke it down before the fighting starts, your likelihood of winning just goes up exponentially because that perpetual drain in these really kind of attritious matchups and the dwarves usually are conducive to that style of play so they're going to be very very attritious so the vargulfs are going to charge in here but thankfully the dwarves were braced so they don't take too much charge damage and you can see they actually didn't even lose any models and the rangers retaliate by throwing some axes but my opponent very well played does a little bit of serpentining there and is able to avoid a lot of my fire so he does now know that i have my troops here so i pull a group of dwarf warriors back and i kind of scurry the rangers over here and have them start shooting at this necromancer but unfortunately he's going to start raising dead here which is going to be very very hard to deal with on that same coin the Mortis Engine is almost destroyed. It's about 40% HP. So again, that's a huge success if I'm able to get that down. So I do pull back some of these Longbeards with great weapons because I realize that he's going to be, you know, very aggressive with these Vargulfs going after my Rangers over here. So you can see they're already pressuring in. Some of my troops are able to intercept them, but honestly, it's very, very hard to catch these guys. So my Slayers, I was kind of keeping them to, you know, deter any cav or anything like that. So I just pulled the Slayers over to help out as well. And you can see he is using a Raised Dead here and his Necromancer is also riding in my back line. But the Slayers are going to be very effective at dealing with these. And you can see the Rangers actually doing some great damage to these Vargulfs and their leadership it's down to six even after just a volley or two so the slayers hopefully will be able to kind of clear up this fodder here and slay some of these zombies and it's always cool to see slayers just chopping through fodder units because they have such high weapon damage with like i think it's like 48 or something so again against like low tier skeletons and units like this they're going to go down pretty quick in the front line we've kind of collapsed with one another and it looks like the mortis engine is indeed dead so right now I can just start focusing Manfred with all these gyrocopters. And since he only has like one air unit, I can simply focus him down. And whichever one he decides to chase, I can just run with it while the other two 
to shoot him. So I'm applying a little bit of a pressure to these Vargulfs, realizing that they will crumble extremely quickly. You can see they have weak binding. They are marked by Ulthar, so they're going to take extra uh, range damage. And, you know, they go down pretty darn quick, you know, once they start getting focused. So over here is Necromancer does come in the back line and is continuing to summon zombies. Very, very difficult to deal with. It. And it does tri uh, trigger an uh, attack from behind. Uh, kind of bonus, well, I guess, a, a di not a bonus, but a negative consequence on my frontline troops here. So I realized the threat of that Necromancer. So again, all my gyrocopters are going to start focusing him really aggressively. And since he is on a horse, he does have a count as a large unit. So he's going to take that anti-large bonus. And you can see he's just getting put in absolute trash can here, which is great. So the gyrocopters, just another two polys, and he just gets absolutely destroyed by that gyrocopter, which is great. So the two Vargulfs here just continuing to do their thing. And this is, again, when focused, they do go down pretty quick due to crumbling. But again, they're so mobile, so quick that they can simply run away. But now that the Necromancer is down, my Gyrocopters are going to be able to focus pretty freely. And also this Rune Lord is getting some great attacks here. You can see its leadership is actually at 42, so very well played on my opponent's part. So these Rangers back here are kind of being protected by the Slayers. The Slayers, again, working through fodder, which is really unfortunate. But it is enabling my Rangers to, you know, fire and do their thing. And they were able to get some great attacks on Manfred. But unfortunately, that, that Vargeist is, uh, or Vargulf is going to get in here and do pretty well. But right now, you can see that my Gyrocopters are indeed starting to shoot at Manfred, which is excellent. Because again, if I can take Manfred out, I don't have to worry about Ray's dead. And honestly, the leadership of all of his units in losing their leader is just going to tank. So again, he's chasing me with Manfred, but what you do is you just run and then the other ones are simply just going to shoot at Manfred while he chases. So this is a very cost effective trade for me. It also kind of makes Ray's dead a little less effective. Although, yeah, he did bring it with Manfred. So instead of, you know, flying over and raising dead as he pleases, he's having a micro, is constantly being pressured and is taking pretty substantial damage. In the front line, my runesmith and the other troops are holding up. They just really need to hold while I take out his important units with these guys. So again, they are doing an excellent job. You can see in the front line, the Cryptors are taking a little bit of damage, down to six models. And also in Manfred, guys, he didn't bring Invocation from the Heck. He only brought it on the Necromancer, who just got put in a trash can, which was great. But still, you know, his raised units in the back are just chasing off my missile units, which was really unfortunate. But again, I think, you know, I got enough value out of them, and the Gyrocopters were able to do really good work. So you can see Manfred does get chased off the battlefield here. He's at, yeah, 136 HP and negative leadership, and he's gonna start crumbling here pretty quick. So down to 90 HP, and unfortunately, a draw. So at that point, the game was pretty much over. We had it won. You can see all of his frontliners were crumbling. Manfred was crumbling there as well. So it was unfortunate. My opponent, you know, did the alt F4 just to pull the draw. You know, it happens. Uh, it happens quite a bit on ladder, actually, especially when you're playing, you know, in the more uh, higher level games. Uh, which, which is definitely a bummer. You know, I went afterwards, looked this guy up on ladder, and I think he's like number four and four or five on ladder. I think his name is like CA Abandon. I, I don't know. But anyways, you guys can look if you really care. But, but you know, I, I feel like a lot of people do this on the high ladder. You know, obviously, they're only going to count their wins. And when they're going to lose, they just alt F4 so it doesn't count it. So um, hopefully Creative Assembly fixes it. That was another reason I wanted to post this, just to kind of bring awareness to the issue. But I know a lot of you guys have been, um, you know, posting it on the forums and things like that. So hopefully that'll be a fix that we get with the uh, the Bretonia DLC. But regardless, it was a great game. You know, definitely well played to my opponent. And, um, you know, again, uh, good dwarf build. I think it's pretty solid against the vampires because, you know, a lot of times the vampires aren't going to bring a lot of air against the dwarves because their options are, you know, a flying lord and a zombie dragon. You might see that. Um, that's a pretty good choice. It's armor piercing, it hits hard, but, you know, Manfred's good as well because he's very fast um, when you put him on the Hellsteed or any lord on the Hellsteed for that matter. Um, but they're not going to bring a lot of Vargeist because Vargeist, though, they do hit hard. They don't have, like, heavy armor piercing, so they're not always that effective at kind of working down dwarf units with heavy armor. Um, aside from that, you know, Felbats are Felbats would have been pretty good at kind of swamping these things down and really covering, but still a lot of people don't bring those because they kind of just bounce off the dwarven armor and honestly like a group of thunders or rangers or anyone can cut through them pretty quick, so it's a bit of a meta pick. Granted, if he did bring like a single group of Vargeists, um, I would have been in some serious trouble. So, but anyways, uh, you know, I think it's a strong dwarf build. I was able to, you know, win that game, and and uh, you know, those guys are pretty solid. So, anyways, uh, well played to my opponent. Uh, look forward to seeing you again on ladder. Hopefully, after the uh, the Alt F4 bug is fixed. But uh, you know, definitely a bummer. You know, but honestly, you know, the ladder's kind of all over the place right now. So, um, anyways, well played, and uh, thanks again for watching, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed that uh, Dawi build. And if you get a chance to try it in ladder. Run a few games. Let me know your thoughts. And, uh, you know, if you think it's a pretty solid build, give me your feedback. Thanks again, guys, and have an excellent night.